Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and today's episode is episode number 173. It is the first of the new campaign that we are going to cover. And if this is your first time hearing this podcast, please be sure that you subscribe wherever it is you're listening to be sure that you get new episodes whenever they come out every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, today's episode, as I mentioned, is the first of the new campaign that we are going to cover uh, for the next two months. It is going to be World War II. After that, it will be the Vietnam War for two months. This is as voted on by you, the people, on Instagram and Facebook. And I want to apologize a little bit for the for my voice. I am a little under the weather trying to record this and knock this out without sounding like poop. So here we go. And now, a tale of honor. Richard was born on the 17th of December, 1907, in Peru, Indiana. At the age of 19, he joined the U.S. Naval Reserve and the following year received an appointment to the U.S. Naval Academy. Richard was married to Mary Jean Packard shortly before graduating from the Academy on the 4th of June, 1931. He went on to serve as a fire control officer aboard the USS New York before going to the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida for flight instruction in 1932. Richard was later ordered to assist in fitting out the USS Portland at the Bethlehem Steel Corporation in Quincy, Massachusetts, and he then served as its division officer until the spring of 1936. Richard received his naval aviator designation, and when war broke out in the Pacific in 1941, he was the executive officer of the USS Pope. While on board the Pope, Richard was involved in three major engagements with the Japanese forces. The Battles of Balikpapan, Badong Strait, and the Java Sea. During the Battle of Balikpapan, Richard directed close-range attacks that delayed the Japanese. During the Battle of Badong Strait, Richard once again directed accurate and deadly fire that was recognized by his commanding officer of commendation and recommendation for a destroyer command. Richard received the Navy Cross for his actions during that battle. Unfortunately, the USS Pope was not as successful during the Battle of Java Sea, it was sailing with two British ships on the 28th of February, 1942, when they were all spotted by the Japanese. The Pope was the last to be sunk, and Richard made sure that even while wounded, all of the life rafts were readied, and he distributed all of the supplies that were available. All but one man was able to escape the ship. Richard and the survivors stayed together with the life rafts for three days and three nights until they were picked up by a Japanese warship, and they were then handed over to the Japanese army. It was Richard's actions as a prisoner of war that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while interned as a prisoner of war of the enemy Japanese in the city of Makassar, Celebes, Netherlands, East Indies, in April 1942, acting instantly on behalf of a naval officer who was subjected to a vicious clubbing by a frenzied Japanese guard venting his insane wrath upon the helpless prisoner, Commander, then Lieutenant, Antrim boldly intervened, attempting to quiet the guard and finally persuading him to discuss the charges against the officer. With the entire Japanese force assembled and making extraordinary preparations for the threatened beating, and with the tension heightened by 2,700 Allied prisoners rapidly closing in, Commander Antrim courageously appealed to the fanatic enemy, risking his own life in a desperate effort to mitigate the punishment. When the other had been beaten unconscious by 15 blows of a hauser and was repeatedly kicked by three soldiers to a point beyond which he could not survive, Commander Antrim gallantly stepped forward and indicated to the perplexed guards that he would take the remainder of the punishment, throwing the Japanese completely off balance in their amazement and eliciting a roar of acclaim from the suddenly inspired Allied prisoners. By his fearless leadership and valiant concern for the welfare of another, he not only saved the life of a fellow officer and stunned the Japanese into sparing his own life, but also brought about a new respect for the American officers and men and a great improvement in camp living conditions. His heroic conduct throughout reflects the highest credit upon Commander Antrim and the U.S. Naval Service. 
Later, Richard was tasked with a work detail that was to construct slit trenches that would provide protection during air raids. He was able to not only rearrange the work plans to make the trenches appear as a giant U.S. from the air, but he did so that on the ground it would appear as if they were dug correctly and got the Japanese to approve the plans. This plan saved hundreds of POW lives from being mistaken as the enemy and being bombed by aircraft. Even though Richard knew if he was discovered doing this, he would have been beheaded, and for that, he received a Bronze Star with Valor device. Once liberated in 1945, Richard returned to the States for rehabilitation, and he would later refresh his pilot training and went on to complete a course at the Naval War College. Richard received his Medal of Honor from President Truman in a ceremony at the White House on the 30th of January, 1947. After many different commands, Richard retired from the Navy on the 1st of April, 1954, after 28 years of service. While on the retirement list, he was promoted to Rear Admiral because of all of his combat awards. Richard Not Antrim died in Mountain Home, Arkansas on the 7th of March, 1969, at the age of 61, and is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 35, Grave 2613. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor Podcast. Head on over to talesofhonorpodcast.com for more information and other ways to listen and support the podcast. And please be sure to leave a good rating and a nice review wherever it is that you are listening. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them on over to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening. <laughs>